Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, as Kadri was saying, so nice to see all of you, Some, so many familiar faces, right? We've been doing this for so long. And uh, it's just a vibrant community. So I was here yesterday. For you guys who were here yesterday, uh, I can tell you that, uh, you know, I was talking yesterday about enterprise architecture, uh, sustainability, and cloud compute. And I can tell you that the presence here is massive, right? It's a lot bigger so than yesterday. So nothing uh, uh, but only positive things to say about that, right? That's why this community is so uh, exciting to work with, right? So yeah, I'm Vlad Frazal. I've been working with uh, OSDU since the beginning. And actually, if we think about OSDU on AWS, right, our OSDU data platform, we've been working with OSDU since before it started. So thank you, you know, for Shell for the partnering with us. So thank you, Monica, for the uh, nice reference that you uh, did before. I really uh, appreciate that, right? But uh, that's the story of OSDU with AWS, right? We've been working with this since the beginning. We're working now, we're committed, and we will be working with OSDU in the near future, right, in the future to go. And the beautiful thing, one of the many beautiful things about OSDU is that, you know, as an open source project, OSDU is the same everywhere, right? So uh, I would like you to understand, to know, right, and to emphasize that, that everything that the forum develops, everything that the forum throws at us, we'll take and we'll implement. So if you're using OSDU somewhere else, it should be easy to use on AWS if, and vice versa, right? Because that's the whole thing and the whole purpose, right? So, um, so what's the difference then, right? So if you're deploying everything, where is the difference, right? I think the difference on, on everything is not on OSDU itself from a functional perspective. It's on the services that are used to build OSDU and to deploy OSDU, uh, to the, be deployed around OSDU, right? So for example, uh, using AWS services like S3, I do not want to get into much detail about that unless you want, of course. Um, we can build some functionalities like uh, multi-tenancy. This is something that we've been working uh, for some time now, and it's something that, you know, uh, we are doing because we are a customer-obsessed company, so we do what our customers are asking, right? And uh, by the way, talking about the features and the functionalities, we might debate when we'll be deploying which functionality, right? But that's because we listen to our customers. So if you want that functionality deployed before or earlier, come talk to us and we work with that, right? So we heard from our customers that, you know, they wanted, and in particular some partners, they wanted multi-tenancy. And a multi-tenancy with data isolation to the storage layer. So we decided to develop that and we're leveraging S3 to facilitate that. So another thing that is important that we heard from our customers and partners is the multi-region. You heard before, right, that the uh, uh, Shell is working with multi-region. We are also working with multi-region. So by leveraging a feature from S3 called multi-region access point that, you know, it's, it's just something that I love, we can deploy a centralized catalog with uh, distributed storage anywhere in the world. So it doesn't really matter where you want your storage. And of course, there's limitations here and there. We're working to implement all of that, right? But we can deploy a centralized catalog with uh, distributed storage with uh, uh, replication that you can control and manage anywhere in the world. And I think that's just great, right? Because uh, I'm, I'm so excited about that because this is something that our customers and partners have been asking you know, for a while, right? So another thing that is important is about ingestion. Um, everybody, or at least many of us, uh, complain a little bit about uh, you know airflow, and uh, I have a I have a love hate relationship with it, uh, but I think we all have right. So we have an easy ingestion as well, leveraging some of our partners and leveraging again some services from AWS like Lambda and Serverless. We have an easy ingestion. If you haven't heard, come talk to us. We can show it to you how it works, right? So it's really easy to get your data inside of OSU. So what else do we do? So um, something else that I want to say is we deploy OSU the way that you want, right? Some customers want to deploy themselves. And I say, OK, give me the uh, installer, and I want to deploy myself because I want to custom it because of my uh, security standards. Fine, we can do that for you. Other customers want OSU deployed fully managed. We do that as well. We have a fully managed software as a service OSU that can be deployed anywhere in the world. I think this is important, it's key, right? So uh, uh, if you have a, uh, your uh, in-country restriction and you want it to be deployed as a service 
in Sao Paulo, for example, we can do that for you. If you want it to be deployed in UAE, we can do that for you right now, right? Managed, deployed anywhere in the world, including multi-region and multi-tenancy. Or if you want to do it embedded. This is something that I would like to call your attention. What do I mean by that? Well, I was talking today, and I spoke a little bit about you know, uh, the innovator's dilemma yesterday, which, were, which is, if you're familiar with that, you know, if you keep doing better what you're doing, eventually you fail, and that's crazy, right? So how do we avoid failing by doing better? I think this, the key is to disrupt. So I think we are disrupting, uh, uh, to some extent, uh, the way OS2 is deployed by offering a very low cost uh, entry point for OSDU. So if you are a partner or a small operator and you wanna use OSDU and you're not, uh, you know, you're not willing to you know, put all that money on a large installation of OSDU, uh, whatever all that money means, right? So you want a low cost, low barrier entry point talking about you know, the five uh, force of uh, Porter as well, right? So if you want to lower the barrier of entry, we have an offering for that. We have an OSU that costs dollars an hour. And I think that's great. So put it all together. We have an OSU that costs a low cost, low barrier of entry, deployed everywhere in the world, managed with multi-tenancy support. So I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool, right? So what else do we have? Well, we have a fantastic, uh, AWS partner ecosystem, and uh, I wish I could say uh, there's going to be some news, hopefully in the following weeks, but uh, Kim would kill me and I would lose my job if I say, but uh, we have uh, something new coming in the following weeks with uh, a strategic partner with uh, something low cost, you know, for smaller operators and, and whatever, whoever is uh, interested, right? So I think that's really cool uh, with our partner ecosystem, right? And it's a huge thing. So together, we have Christine here. Uh, if you want to know more about that, everybody knows Christine Rhodes. If you don't know, I advise you to talk to her. She can explain all of, about our, our uh, partners. We have created more than 40 uh, proof of value projects integrating ISV solutions to OSGU. By the way, tomorrow, uh, we have a happy hour where we're gonna be launching a new program, right, uh, called Launchpad with OSGU partners and AWS, where you can see end-to-end -end workflows implemented as a service managed, uh, powered by uh, our great partners, uh, 47 Liney. So if you want to know more about that, talk to Mick Baz. He's sitting over there. So thank you, Mick, for being a, such a strong partner. Right? So, and, and everybody else, I hate to, you know, point to one. It's just, you know, we're thankful for all of you guys that are working with us. And there's more. And if you have a partner that is not here, Ask him why he's not leveraging OSDU on AWS, right? Especially what I'm saying, that you can deploy manage anywhere in the world, low cost, any way that you want, multi-tenant, multi-region, right? So uh, that's great. Um, and more, right? There's an and more down there, so yeah. So what else? Given that OSDU is the same, given that OSDU is you know, from a functional perspective, right, it is the same. What else can we offer besides all the functionalities that are already said? So I want to tell you and talk about, if you haven't heard, AWS has an integrated uh, energy portfolio. So if you want a solution, um, and of course we have our partners, we're not competing with your partners, don't take me wrong, of course, right? So, uh, but if you want a solution that you want to talk about geology and geophysics or drilling and completions, right, or if you want all the way to midstream, downstream, and even new energies, right, if you want a solution about microgrids or car carbon uh, uh, trading or offshore wind or whatever, we have a, a, a lot of solutions developed by AWS that we can deploy, you know, on top and around of OSGU as well. So put all of, all of that together, right? We have OSDU, we have our uh, deploy all the functionalities, we have all the things that we can, all the functionalities that we can do leveraging OSDU and, and AWS services, right? We have all the solutions from the partners, we have AWS solutions as well. I think that's a, a pretty powerful uh, solution with resources available to you, right? So I want you all to know. So with that, we can do some pretty cool things with all of that. For example, there's so many cases that I wanna to talk to y'all, but it's just, I don't have time. We don't have time, right? We, are, we have only 15 minutes here. But one use case that I would like to talk about is the ultra-fast seismic data processing. Again, that's something that we did leveraging uh, AWS services, leveraging Lambda. 
So uh, instead of, you know, we have this challenge, this operator that, uh, you know, was uh, taking hours uh, to convert from a large uh, seismic file. So using Lambda, we were able to parallelize all of that and do, you know, for a very low cost in a, in a fraction of the time, right? We are talking about five cents here. So how cool is that, right? That it can process a terabyte size file for pennies right, and in, you know, a, a very low time by using parallel, parallelization and serverless, right? So that's an, one solution that I'm, we're really proud of that. Um, another solution that I would like to talk is uh, seismic interpretation using deep learning. So image recognition is something that is, is not new, of course, right? It's been out there for, you know, a long time. So we use that and we have cases of that where we use uh, image recognition and other machine learning techniques uh, to do seismic interpretation, right? So I'm not a geophysicist, I'm an IT guy, uh, but uh, we have uh, 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 people that can talk about that and explain all of that, how that's being done, right? This case in particular, it was uh, led by uh, uh, professional services, I think, right? Him, so, yeah. What else? So another thing that we can do, and again, these are just examples of stuff that we can do, right? And uh, that we are already doing. There's a lot more I'd love to talk about. So for example, uh, there's this yellow device there called Monitron. Uh, you can plug that and put that on an equipment. It will monitor uh, vibration and temperature and stream that data to the cloud. You can combine that data with OSU and boom, you get OSDU integrated asset management. So this is one of the many possibilities that, uh, of stuff that we do. So there's a couple demos that I, um, I've been doing around to uh, some customers where I'm using uh, uh, low-code, no-code machine learning to predict curves for curve prediction, right, from well, uh, well logs. And that's something that, uh, you know, it's pretty good as well. It's pretty cool to show. And there's no coding at all. You just drag and drop stuff and create your uh, prediction models, right? Uh, there's another one that you can do using very low code with SQL services where you can create a machine learning model using SQL service, uh, I mean SQL uh, uh, commands, right, uh, a very low code. And there's another one that I was doing with uh, Yuri the other day, and uh, Yuri is uh, another architect that worked with us. He's sitting over there close to Christine. He went, we, were we were showing uh, QuickSight Q. QuickSight Q, you can ask questions using natural language. So how cool is that, right? So these are just some examples. I can talk for hours, believe me, uh, on you know, how much I can talk you know, about anything. But uh, basically, it's because uh, we innovate. Uh, um, the reason for this slide is we work, and this is th the truth, right? We work from what our customers want backwards from that. So 90% of what we do on AWS is build what you tell us that matters to you like the features on OSU that we're implementing, right? Uh, and the other 10% is from uh, innovation that we decide to do, like serverless, for example, or, or like, you know, multi-region access point with S3, which allowed, you know, the multi-region to be implemented uh, 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 for OSU on AWS, right? So um, I think that's uh, pretty impressive numbers, right? To deploy 3,000, more than 3,300 uh, new features in a single year, it's uh, just, it's an, an amazing, incredible number, right? So, everybody has been talking about uh, large language models. I know that this is a little bit techy uh, for, for some of you guys, but I wanted to cover that. So, at AWS, we are focused on democratizing uh, access to large language models, right? We want you to have your large language model deployed on your account with your data. So think about the use cases. You can create your own, because this is something that a customer asked me, and uh, uh, the customer said, hey, can I train a machine learning model for me with my language, with my knowledge, and deploy for myself? Because I want it to be proprietary to my company. Can I do that? Yes, you can. So with a very, again, this is important, and I apologize for emphasizing, but we believe that this is so important for OSDU to have something that can be deployed at low cost anywhere that you are, anywhere in the world, right? So that's what we're doing here. And we have all the, the, the good stuff. We have the hugging smiley face. We have, you know, all the large models that are out there. There's even one model. If you've uh, seen me doing some demos, you probably saw me doing a demo with uh, Alexa, right? Which is a, 
It's interesting, but it's a little bit limited, right? Because of the way we have to model, for that demo in particular, uh, the way we have to model um, the Q&As, right? The questions and answers. But with this, uh, we can use something called Alexa Teacher, right? Which is a, a model, a large language model, uh, deployed with a, uh, a, 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 you know, many, many parameters. I don't remember the name now. I think it's 20 billion parameters or something like that for a fraction of the time and the cost, right? So there's a lot I can talk about that. So uh, if you're interested on your, your and, and again, your large language models deployed to you, owned by you, uh, we have a solution for you. And also, um, and I promise I'm almost uh, done with this, so don't get mad with me, uh, uh, anybody, but I'm almost done with this. So, uh, it's just that, you know, there's so much we want to talk about. And by the way, I'm looking to Darius right now, and I forgot to mention, I apologize, that we also deploy on-prem. So if you want OSGU on-prem, we have our partnership with IBM. So we have Kim here and Darius here. Uh, so uh, now we can work with you and deploy on-prem. If there's no region, there's no cloud presence there, whatever the cloud provider is, we can go there and deploy OSGU on-prem, right? So anyway, back to... Uh, the AI and machine learning stuff, we have a program right now that we launched to support uh, startups, right? It's an accelerator for startups. So the, the link is over there, down there. Uh, you can, if you're interested on that, there's some funding for you, right? On top of all the other funding that we provide. So I think that's pretty cool because we're committed to that, right? So anyway, I hope I made the case, but if, uh, there's something, um, one final slide that I want to show you guys, because if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, right, if you are looking and say, oh, hey, who is that guy over there talking this thing, right, and, and say that has little cost and that uh, oh, OSU and AWS is so cool, so let's ask someone else, right? I decided to ask, you know, chat GPT, so uh, I decided to ask, hey, chat GPT, why should I use OSGU on AWS, right? So, and, and this is a video, right? So, uh, why should I use? And then I ask, oh, okay, you should have asked why I should not use. So, call me biased, but I'm not interested on that question, right? I'm interested on, on, on this one. So, why should I use OSGU on AWS? And uh, it's saying right there, so don't trust me, trust ChatGPT, right? It's saying uh, <laughs> sustainability, security, and everything else, right? So, thank you, OpenAI, for that. I agree with you, right? So. <laughs> So yeah, that's all I had. <laughs>